Many of us remember the glory days of the great Iron Mike, but only the true fans have the courage to keep his dark days in our memory. Tyson was only defeated fairly by two opponents. Stay until the end not just to learn what happened in those fights, but also what was going on in Mike's personal life and why he agreed to step into the ring again only to end up surrendering. By the time of the fight, Tyson had already been inactive for 17 months. In fact, his last fight had been on February 22, 2003, when he knocked out his compatriot Clifford Etienne in Memphis in just 49 seconds. Many today point out that we were near the end of Tyson's career, but he wouldn't admit it. What his fans perhaps didn't know by then was that Tyson, the great monster, was backed into a corner. He had been forced to fight due to a dire financial situation. He had squandered a fortune of nearly $300 million, which was what he had earned throughout his career, and he knew he had to do something to avoid falling even deeper into the hole. What he didn't know was that after four rounds, he would sink even further. From the beginning, Danny Williams appeared confident. When he entered the ring, it seemed the audience was only on his side. However, when Tyson came out, the arena erupted. Tyson was 38 and Williams was 31. Although the age difference wasn't huge, Tyson knew he had to be cautious with his decisions in the ring. During the first round, both fighters were studying each other. Contrary to expectations, there were more clinches to buy time than well-connected punches. However, it seemed Tyson had a slight advantage given Williams' fighting style. Trade, and that could be a huge mistake. The second round began similarly to how the first one ended. Tyson eventually managed to push Williams against the ropes and unleash a powerful combination of punches. But Danny's guard was perfectly positioned to leave no weak spots. Uh, Danny Williams told us he wants to take this fight to the fourth and fifth or sixth round, but the problem is to take this much punishment. Tyson continued pressing forward while Danny kept going to Tyson's body to buy time. The night's results indicate that this was indeed Danny's strategy. The aggression escalated with one minute left in the second round when Danny, against the ropes, started counterattacking the punches Tyson was trying to land. Then he returned to his strategy of going after Tyson, allowing the seconds to pass, which ended the second round. Tyson ripping uppercuts to the chin. Now back comes Williams with a left-right combination. And that was the uppercut by Williams. He's ripping those shots. Pushing Tyson back. It's competitive now. At this point, Tyson still seemed to have the fight under control. He was always moving forward, working his way in with punches to corner Danny. However, due to Danny's guard, Tyson couldn't land any hooks. The third round began, and it seemed being against the ropes had become customary for Danny. With the difference now being that he would fight more actively against Tyson. With 2.30 left in the third round, the referee tried to separate them when Williams hit Tyson in the face. A move that would foreshadow the end of this fight. He is really right. making an impact. There's some blood. Gradually, the aggression between these two fighters increased as the seconds passed. Tyson, now with a cut over his left eyebrow, began to show signs of fatigue. In the fourth round, Tyson came out ready to give it his all. He tried to throw a right hook to William's face, but missed. Danny knew he had to do something before Tyson found the perfect opportunity to land one of his powerful punches. So, he took the initiative. Now it was he who pushed Tyson against the ropes. Big right hand, a straight right by Tyson, but it was out in the chest, and back comes William! In the final 30 seconds of this fourth round, Tyson's exhaustion was evident, and Williams, who had been fighting passively for most of the time, had enough energy to create an explosion. Danny started throwing a combination of punches that Tyson probably couldn't even see coming. He no longer held his fists up to his face, 
he was worn out, and letting his guard down did not work in his favor at all. With less than 15 seconds left in the round, Williams threw the hook that didn't send Tyson to the canvas solely because it was caught by the ropes. The referee began the count, but Mike couldn't get up before it ended. It's over. Williams won, was heard, and the arena erupted. Williams had already said he would knock Tyson out in a few rounds, and he had kept his word. For him, the victory had opened the door to a world title fight. But for Tyson, it had perhaps been one of the bitterest moments of his career. Although this defeat wouldn't yet be the reason for his surrender. On June 11, 2005, the audience and the world witnessed what was called Tyson's surrender. His last legendary fight, which marked the pitiful end of his legacy. Many still claim that Kevin McBride stepped into the ring without merits or ambitions. In fact, the milestone of Tyson's defeat isn't attributed to him, but to time and the excesses of his private life. Tyson stepped into the ring as the announcers said, the Tyson phenomenon lives on. McBride, 32, and Tyson, 38, set the perfect stage for a repeat of what happened with Danny Williams, a exhausted Tyson being knocked out. The first round is always about recognition, but it seemed Kevin was throwing punches hoping to land on Tyson's face and end the fight quickly. It was obvious that Kevin's slight height advantage put him in a privileged position for his hooks. A lot will depend early on Joe Cortez. Will he let the McBride kind of work in the inside? Will he let him tie up? Tie Tyson could only go for Kevin's body, trying to wear him down enough to knock him out. A strategy we had seen in some of his best fights before, but one Mike didn't seem to handle as well anymore. A long left by, by Mike Tyson. Contrary to the Williams fight, from the beginning, it was McBride who controlled the match. Pushing Tyson against the ropes and keeping his guard up against any counterattacks. Throwing wide sweeping hooks. I mean, that's, you know, open, wide open to be countered. Nice uppercut on the inside. And again, the hook, mostly an arm. As the bell rang to start the third round, Tyson came out furious. The audience could confirm that the beast was still alive. But McBride wasn't ready to give up. The fourth round seemed to offer a glimmer of hope for Tyson. As the audience stood up intermittently, Tyson advanced and seemed to corner McBride with his combinations. However, none were strong enough to break through his guard. Tyson had managed to connect punches to Kevin's body as well as his face. But every time he returned to his corner, he looked more worn out. Someone with as much experience as him knew that the longer the fight lasted, the more he could be knocked out due to physical exhaustion. This made him come out furious in the fifth round, but McBride counterattacked as strongly as he could. And his strategy worked against him. Tyson was already starting to drop his guard, while Kevin took advantage to land punches on his face. He was probably recalling those last few seconds against Danny Williams. Punches in. Tyson, though, showing that obviously, and for the most part, it's keeping him in this fight. And right now, look at a stationary Mike Tyson, not throwing too many punches. And McBride popping shots off Tyson's head. And Tyson is starting. The final 15 seconds of the round were held for Tyson. Kevin managed to put him against the ropes and, due to his lowered guard, connect a series of punches directly to his head. The phrase saved by the bell turned into a favor for Mike. The great Iron Mike knew he had only returned to his corner because the round had ended. While his team tried to give him instructions, his head hung low, his gaze lost. The beast was exhausted. Both fighters knew the sixth round was decisive, so when the bell rang, they both came out with all the power they had. The referee was forced to separate them after Tyson tried to break McBride's arm in a clinch. Both fighters were asked to fight fairly, and the round resumed. His guard was already down, and Tyson could only go for McBride's body to buy time. 220, 
remaining in the round, and Tyson trying to end it right here. So what a sense of urgency on both sides. But with less than 15 seconds left to finish the round, Tyson sat on the canvas. Right in the same position he was in his fight against Williams. He wasn't knocked out, but he couldn't get up. When he reached his corner, his team tried to encourage him. But Tyson surrendered. If seeing Tyson give up was devastating for his fans, hearing him say, I realized I have nothing left in the in-ring interview finished breaking them. It was a moment of humility and honesty for Tyson, as he admitted he had the ability to stay in shape, but his instinct when it came to fighting wasn't the same. Tyson said he didn't have the stomach to fight or the ferocity, he said he wasn't that animal anymore. He finally admitted that he was only accepting fights to pay off the debts he had accumulated from his controversial lifestyle. He closed with a tragic I'm sure I'll find something else to do. Boxing doesn't define me. Since he didn't want to disrespect the sport by being defeated by boxers of lesser caliber than him. And that's how a legend retired. That moment of humility earned him a permanent place in the hearts of boxing fans. His punches hadn't only taken him to the top, his consciousness and honesty upon retiring had humanized him. The beast had become a living legend. Do you think these last fights tarnished the legacy of the great Iron Mike? Let us know your opinion in the comments.